question is from T Evans 2208. Are there any benefits to carb cycling or can it cause a bad relationship with food? Uh, it, it, okay. It can cause a bad relationship with food if it turns into restrict binge. So if carb cycling for you looks like no carbs and then all the carbs, all the carbs at once. Uh, then that's a problem. Other than that, here's the benefits of carb cycling that I have found personally. I don't think it's going to accelerate or maximize fat loss. I don't think there's any evidence to, to, to show that that is su it's superior cycle than to just have lower carb or just go higher carb. I think the benefits are psychological. I really do. I think uh, for a lot of people, reducing carbs is a great way to eat a lower calorie diet, proteins and fats tend to be more satiating. But if, if you've ever gone on a low-carb diet for a long time, you know how your workouts start to suffer. You don't get good pumps. Is basing uh, carbohydrates, like like adding that to when you're most active, is that part of carb cycling or is that called something else? That is that is a type of carb cycling. Okay. Yeah, where it's like targeted carbohydrate intake. Where, exactly. For, uh, for athletic purposes, like that's kind of where I would see, you know, some benefit in terms of how – utilize like accessible fuel like have carbs obviously being superior there well first of all any diet can cause a bad relationship with food i don't care what diet it is right so that that's a tough one to to answer right like it could yeah absolutely it could it could for anyway i i love carb cycling i use it um quite often uh i'd love to teach it uh, to people and i and i probably agree with you sal like it, it's probably because of the psychological benefits mm -hmm. i just i think uh it kind of mirrors uh, our natural our natural tendencies of eating, and we don't even realize it. Yeah. Like if you were to take a snapshot of how somebody eats for three weeks consistently, that wasn't tracking, but you could track for them and see, you would see they kind of have this natural ebb and flow, probably of carbohydrate. You're just managing it and controlling it right. and sticking to to boundaries around that. Where I think what a lot of people naturally do is they 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 stay in this kind of low to moderate and then they do a bunch of activity or they go a long period without eating and everything gets depleted and then they get really hungry, they get the cravings mm -hmm. and then they overdo it like crazy and then they come back down moderately. And so I think we kind of naturally do this anyways. Uh, but doing carb cycling correctly, you're obviously figuring out your macros and what a high day, a medium day, and a low day would look like you, and then you and you cycle. And we should explain that, right? So there's probably a lot of people listening going like, "What the fuck does carb cycling mean?" It just it basically means that you're going through periods of lower carbohydrate intake and moderate to higher carbohydrate intake for a specified period of time. And I want I want people to know too because i get this question a lot um <clears throat> like how you do that as far as you know how many days high low and it, what's the cycle look like i've actually played around with this and and done it uh, multiple ways and my advice is whatever you'll stick to right like um i i personally used to like to have two really really low days a moderate day and then a really high day and, and then I, repeat yeah and then repeat um I, i've done it all kinds of ways though where i do a low a medium a high and it's a three-day cycle and you repeat mm -hmm. it, it's really uh, and uh, and what i would do is just what felt best with me what uh, how my workouts were going when i was running that way with that, that low of carbohydrates versus allowing a moderate and a high day and only running it three days like you know play with these things there's there are no rules you just got to figure out how many total calories first your body needs, then how many total gra uh, 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 grams of protein it needs. So that's where you start. And then you look at your your fats and carbohydrates for the rest of the makeup of where your calories need to be and divide that. And we talk all the time about, you know, what what exactly should that percentage? I like to split my, my carbs and my fat. I like to be a very even balance where- You mean calorie-wise? Yeah, calorie-wise, yeah, yeah. right? Not gram per gram. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. Not gram for gram, gram for gram. But if you look at, I've got, after I look at my protein intake, let's say for argument's sake, I've got 2,000 calories left to spend. I'd like to get about 1,000 of that from fat, 1,000 of that from carbohydrates, mm -hmm. figure out how many grams that equals, and then divide that over three days and cycle them that way. Mm -hmm. And if you're trying to lean out- so that's about 100 grams of, that'd be like 90 grams of fat, 150 grams of carbs or something like right. that. And that was just a random yeah, number. Yeah, it's yeah. not a real number. Just so people, you know, get an idea. Of how yeah, yeah. Down. But I mean, so then, and then from there you, you run one day where you're, you know, that would be your, what your body needs, right? Mm -hmm. So a surplus would be a little bit over that. Uh, I would consider a moderate day kind of hitting, hitting your maintenance and then a, a, a low day. Uh, being, you know, maybe 50% less of carbohydrates. Yeah, and the, the way I would like to do it in the past was kind of what Justin was talking about, where it's more targeted. So I would have some carbs around my workouts and then on my 
higher carb days, I would throw in an additional carbohydrate meal so I've later done, in the night. I've done something. I, I love to do this, which is similar to that. Justin's thinking performance uh, wise. I used to think uh, like what I was focusing on, like a, when I was competing. Mm. So I would always keep my either moderate or high days around the, the muscle groups that I really want to grow and build. Yeah. Right? So, oh, interesting. Yeah. so you have the energy to pump. Yeah. The there. energy to pump and I have the refeed of all the, all those nutrients and it just, it felt good to have my moderate to high days around the muscle groups that I'm trying to develop and really push and stretch sure. myself. That makes sense. And then muscle groups that are like my arms, a strength of mine that I don't, I could skip and be okay with. I would, and, and when you, cause we know when you're on really low carbs, sometimes you just don't have the oomph to train. And so I would pick the days that I would be training, you know, muscle groups that are not a weakness of mine. And then that I wouldn't care if I was, didn't have the intensity or the ability to push in those training sessions. 